it's a great day for our country it's a great day for india as they say in hindi sare jahan se acha bharat desh hamara hai i'm very happy to greet you from, from india this is a very special congressional meeting about the clear and the present dangers for india's constitution that you are going to discuss today on the republic day i am a priest i am a bishop from india bangalore metropolitan city freedom of religion it's ironic in the name of the freedom of religion we have been bringing more and more laws and regulations to restrict our freedom of religion article number 25 guarantees that every citizen has the right to proclaim to preach and to propagate his religion and so many other chapters that are there in our constitution that make make us proud they make us feel to stand tall that no other country has got this much of diversity and freedom as we have but what's going on what's going on i am little sad today that our country surely based on the tenets of religions the the truth of the religions you know even in the christian religion we say that there is grains of truth in every religion is something great we have to observe it and the countries the religions of our country are beautiful are beautiful i i just join my hands in front of my hindu friends they are noble they are great sometimes we have much to learn from them from from our muslims who love peace islam from our buddhists the the spirit of abnegation sacrifice from our jains who are ready to do anything in order to promote life and with such beautiful cultures where are we going so so today let me restrict myself to about what's called the karnataka protection what what is called as the karnataka anti conversion bill but it is termed as the karnataka protection of freedom of religion bill it was passed as a law in the lower house in the assembly on 23rd of december what we call the genocide that happened in kandamal in the year 2008 or 2009 it blasted it bloated and blasted into a big big shame for the country about 3000 houses were burnt about 300 places of worship were burnt about 60 to 70 people lost their lives before that you know yesterday or today was the day of what's called graham stein's day and he along with his two sons were burnt so this is the building up of a slow sort of what we call genocide or the the restriction of religious freedom that we have as to as karnataka basically what is our doubt i would say three or four things number one is this bill is not necessary because the constitution is strong enough the constitution is firm enough and we have many laws and regulations many acts in the parliament that can surely withstand what we call the government would say that forceful of fraudulent conversions so therefore it is not necessary and secondly we say that this particular bill will be discriminatory to christians alone surely the other states have passed it but nowhere do you find anyone else being embroiled into this controversy of conversion as such except perhaps christians a little of the muslims that's all and therefore this will be discriminatory for us christians number thirdly i say that even without the law there are so many instances of violence of hurt of hating each other is taking place you know the the pucl a uh, highly regarded body a legal body has 
collected details and enlisted each one of them according to the day and time and date etc and they have found more than 50 instances by which in Karnataka in the year 2021 alone attacks have taken place. Of course the highest is in Uttar Pradesh and the other North, North states but Karnataka alone to have about 50 such attacks and some of them very sadly at Christmas time. You know Christmas is a universal feast and uh, there was a school of ours which was celebrating in a place called Pandapura in Mysore and the people found it very offensive and objected to it, made noise for it. So this is our fear that this bill without being passed a bill has caused so much hurt for us. Perhaps when it is passed a bill everyone will have it in their hand as a license that they can, everyone can go and have check, everyone can have perhaps double checks to find out what is happening and everything can be restricted. As regards the bill itself, I must say the Karnataka legal department has not done a good job. It's an unprofessional job. It is not only affecting the Christians alone. You know the freedom of, freedom of marriage is going to be affected. A person will not be very free to marry a person of his own. The Muslims, or the Hindus, the Christians will have to see and scrutinize every name. And also the freedom of privacy. You know, such a great thing for a country like America, the law of privacy. But here, a person who is going to be converted has to first of all make a declaration to the district magistrate and he conducts an inquiry like a so like an inquiry by putting up under the notice board all the names and details. He entrusts it to the police and the police again take their own time. And this whole thing is going to be a six month torture for the person who wants to be converted. And in the end perhaps he may not succeed. And if there is something in his statements that embroils him, he is liable for punishments from five years to ten years, from one lakh to ten lakhs, etc. It's, it's like criminalizing conversion itself. I say this is a betrayal of our Christian service. I feel very sad. <clears throat> you know, this country has been ruled for 200 years by the British, by the Portuguese, by the French. If they wanted, they could have converted the whole of India at least 20% more, not just this too small 2% two that we have now. On the other hand, what the missionaries have done is great. So also the service for the poor, you know, our hospitals, our clinics. We Christians may not be running what called the super speciality hospitals, but a poor person is welcome in our hospital. What we, we call the what we call the the healing of the hand of our sisters, of our doctors, of our missionaries, who have cured so many people and treated them with respect, with dignity. And that is the gift of the Christian service. And today, you know, you must have heard of it. Mother Teresa is not considered a favored person. Her organization for the poor has been punished perhaps for certain economic, I don't know, deficiencies I cannot understand. But suddenly the eyes opened. And the civil society, what we call the human rights associations, on the 24th or one day before Christmas, spontaneously came together in Bangalore, about 40 associations together and they told us, Christians, I think you better be on the quiet now. So far we thought it was affecting you Christians, but now we realize it affects you, but it affects the Indian citizens much more than you. The Dalits are going to be affected, the Muslims are going to be affected, the women are going to be affected, the poor are going to be affected, the freedom of choice is going to be affected, our privacy is going to be affected. And so all the others have come together in order to voice their opinion and perhaps if possible also to challenge this in the, in the courts of law, which I am sure will be surely holding aloft the freedom of the country, the republic of the country the unity of the country, the diversity of the country. And this is what I pray for, this is what I am asking. I bless and thank the organizers for giving this, me this opportunity to speak about our country. I am not bitter, I am hopeful and I have great respect for country 
I have great respect for the leaders of our country. And our own religion says all authority comes from God. And therefore, may God give our rulers good wisdom, discernment, courage in order to make the good decisions so that the whole country can sail together, that we can, we Christians can work much more harder, much more determined in order to help the poor and bring out this country. This is my country. This is my land. And surely you are also proud of it. I wish you once again a very happy Republic Day.